All right, I know what you were thinking when you saw the title of this video. This has to be a joke, right? I mean, it's adding text, it's simple, but when it comes to adding text in DaVinci Resolve, you actually have a lot of options and it can be easy to get a little overwhelmed or confused, especially if you're new to editing or new to DaVinci Resolve. So today we're gonna jump into DaVinci Resolve. I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know to get started adding text and titles to your videos and making them look the way you want. Let's get started. All right, so we are here in DaVinci Resolve. We're in the edit page and all of your text elements can be found in the effects library under titles. And right off the bat, we see we've got a few differences here. So we've got our basic text elements. Those can be recognized by the little T next to the name of the type of title. So we've got left lower thirds, middle lower thirds, right lower thirds, scroll and text. And these are all basic text elements. Now underneath that, we've got text plus and a whole bunch of other titles that have lightning bolts next to them. And those are fusion titles. So those are actually rendered out as fusion elements. And we'll get into that in just a little bit. And then below all of that, we've got our subtitles and I've made a video about subtitles. I'll have it linked below, but we'll dive into it a little bit in this video as well. Let's start off by just adding a basic text element to our video. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna bring a text element over and you can see that I'm doing it just like I would any other video clip. It goes on its own video track and you can see now we've got a title overlaid on top of our video. And if we wanna change this around, all of the controls can be found in the inspector on the right. Now, if you don't see the inspector, just go ahead and click inspector and that should pop up. Right at the top, we've got a text box. This is where we can change what our title says. So we're gonna go ahead and click adventure. If I could spell correctly, that would be great. Thank you very much. And underneath the text box, we can change our font family. We're gonna go with open sans and we can change it normal, bold, italic, bold, italic. Let's see what bold looks like. I don't like bold. We're gonna go with normal. And then from there, it's a bunch of basic like word processor controls. So we've got our size. We'll go ahead and increase that a little bit. We can increase the tracking, which is the spacing between the letters. If we want to increase the line spacing, if we have text on multiple lines, we can do that. Our font style, this will give us an underline, an overline, a stroke, and then we'll change and relocate the text with these two right here. Let's go ahead and reset all of that. And then here, font case, we can make it so it's all caps, all lowercase, small caps, and title caps. We're gonna go with all caps. Ooh, made a little bit too big. Let's go ahead and bring that down. And then below that, we can change our horizontal and vertical anchor, our text alignment. I usually, for titles, keep them centered. And then position, we can move it up, left, right, up, down, all that stuff. And then to reset that, you can either double click on position or you can hit this little reset button and that'll bring it back to its original state. And below that, we've got zoom, so we can zoom in, zoom out, do all that stuff. Now below our basic text controls, we've got drop shadow. So we can change the color of our drop shadow if we want, but I actually wanna keep this black. So we're gonna go ahead and cancel that out. And we can add an offset. So I'm gonna move this slightly to the right and slightly down. That looks good right there. We can blur the drop shadow if we want, which I think is a nice look. And we can change the opacity of the drop shadow. Below drop shadow, we've got stroke. So we can add a little stroke around the outline of our letters. Let's go ahead and create a red stroke. Okay, and we can change the size. And now we've got a nice red stroke around the outline of our text. And then below background, we can add a background to our text and we can change the color of that background. We can change the color of the outline of that background. We can change the width of the outline, the width of the background. We're gonna start off by changing the height, getting that to where we want it. We're gonna change the width just a little bit, make that a little bit bigger. We can change the corner radius. So if you bring it all the way to the left, it's super sharp all the way to the right. We got this nice oval looking thing. I actually think that looks really good. We can change the center positioning if we want. Go ahead and reset that and we can change the opacity. Now, one thing I do wanna point out is that any of these controls that have these little diamonds next to them, that means we can set keyframes for those controls. So let's say I wanted to have this little logo title thing sliding in from the top. What I can do is come up to position and I can bring my Y position 
Just drag to the right until it's out of frame. Make sure that my playhead is back at the beginning. We're gonna go ahead and set a keyframe on the position. Let's move forward six frames. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we'll reset our position. It'll add a keyframe automatically. And now if we go and we play this back, you'll see we've got a nice little slide in title. It's got a background, a stroke. I really like the colors. It actually pops against the background. I think, I think we're good to go there. And all of those controls are available in all of the basic text elements. So all of your lower thirds, your scrolling text, you can do all of that stuff with them. The only difference is with lower thirds, you may have two lines. And in that case, there will be two separate text boxes. So you just wanna make sure that you add your text in both. All right, let's go ahead and get rid of this text element. And let's go ahead and drag text plus onto our videos. Now, like I said, these text elements that have a lightning bolt next to them, these are all fusion elements. So these are gonna render out just like any other fusion project. And you'll see that once I drag this on, we actually have a red line here. And then when it turns blue, it's all rendered out. So if you have a computer with maybe less RAM than you should, DaVinci Resolve recommends at least 32 gigabytes of RAM in order to use Fusion. If you're working with eight or 16, you might have some trouble playing back or you may just have to wait longer for everything to render. For now, let's go ahead and do some stuff with this title. So again, we've dragged the element onto its own video track. It's overlaying the video. And if we come into our inspector, we've got most of the same controls, but we've got some extra stuff too. Let's go over that. So first, let's go ahead and do the same thing. We'll add adventure. This time I'm going to type it in all caps and we'll keep the open sans font, but we're going to make it light instead of bold. And we're going to increase the tracking. And like I said, a lot of these controls are the same, like size tracking, line spacing, vertical and horizontal anchors, vertical and horizontal justifications. But we do have some new stuff as well, like direction. We can change from left to right to right to left, and this will actually reverse the order of the letters. We can do top down or bottom up if we want vertical text. And then we also have this right on control. So if we want maybe, let's first go ahead and go back to left to right. If we want to have this right onto the screen, what we can do is bring this all the way down here. So the text disappears. And what we'll do is we'll set a keyframe We'll move forward six frames, one, two, three, four, five, six. And we'll just drag this right dot out until all of our letters are showing. There we go. Wait for that to render. And now if we play that back, it writes onto the screen and then we can go the opposite direction. Let's say we want it to write off. We can go back one, two, three, four, five, six, seven frames. Go ahead, set a keyframe, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. Drag the left dot over to the right dot. And now if we play through the second half of that text element, the text disappears. Now if we come over here to our layout and our transform sections, this will actually deal less with just the text and more with the actual frames, you can change the center position, you can change the size, the perspective, you can add a background, you can rotate it. But like I said, that controls the entire frame and not just the text. So what we're gonna do is we're going to move on to the shading section. And this is where we can start to do some really, really cool stuff. So we can go in our properties, let's say instead of a solid fill we want to do outline only so we can click that in appearance and now we've got outline only there and we can actually change the opacity of that if we want we can change the blending mode we can change the thickness i actually want to make this just a little bit thinner we can change the join style which is actually basically just corner radius for all of this text so right now it's slightly rounded if i hit this left one, we've got it a little bit more rounded. And then if I go to the icon all the way on the right, it's perfectly square. So we're actually gonna go with more rounded here. And we can change our line style from solid to maybe dash or dot 
or dash dot or dash dot dot. I actually kind of like dash dot dot. It looks a little bit like stars. Then we can go ahead and change the color of our text. So let's go ahead and maybe do a, oh, I don't know. Let's go ahead, do some kind of teal turquoise looking thing. And then below all of these controls, we've got softness. So we can increase the softness of our X axis and our Y axis. And then we can add a glow a little bit too much. We can add a glow to our blur like that, and then we can change the blend. So if I bring it down, it'll go back to normal, bring it back up, that glow will come. And we can actually keyframe that blend. So let's say we wanted to do like a neon effect, we could keyframe that blend. So it just comes off and on really, really quickly and we can get like a, like a flickering on, something like that. Below that, we've got our position controls where we can do offsets on our X, Y, and Z axis. And then below that is rotation, which is really cool. Let's say I wanted to flip it upside down. I could have the entire thing flipping upside down. I could spin the letters on the Y axis and I can spin it on the Z axis. And again, you can add keyframes to all this stuff. Below rotation, you've got shear. So if you wanna slant those letters a little bit, you can do that. And you can do that for the X or the Y axis. And then finally, we've got size and you can change the size. You can expand on your X axis and you can expand on your Y axis. And you really do have a lot of control. I mean, you can even keyframe that text box with the text plus element. So if you wanted, let's say you were doing an advertisement or something like that, where the title changes on the beat. So you want a different word on each beat. You can set keyframes at each beat and change the words and even change the font, which is super cool. So you can do all of this stuff without ever going into the Fusion page, which is really nice. And you've got a bunch of other options as well, such as lower thirds. Let's go ahead and get rid of that text plus element. You've got some lower thirds. And these, to be quite honest, I'm not a huge fan of the look, so I would maybe learn how to create your own. You've got lower thirds, you've got titles. Let's go ahead and throw in a 3D title real quick. You've just got all sorts of stuff. And then you've even got title zipper here. Now, the one thing about these pre-made title templates is that they are pre-made templates, which means that a lot of the motion and a lot of the control are baked in. So other than title color and font and position and stuff like that, th those you have full control over, but you don't really have control over anything else unless you go into the Fusion page and play around with the modifiers, but that's a little bit more advanced than what we're gonna be touching on in this video. Now, below all of those pre-made templates, we've got our subtitles, and that's a little bit different than everything else I've shown you today. If we drag that on to our timeline, it actually adds a subtitle track. We can drag that in, we can select it, and we can go in and add a subtitle. This is a subtitle and we can choose where that ends. We can extend it out, we can shorten it. And then if we want, let's go ahead and select that again. We can hit add new, go this is another subtitle. And if we play that back, this is a subtitle. This is another subtitle. So that's basically everything that you can do in the edit page. Now let's say you wanna build out like a full crazy text effect. You would need to do that in the Fusion page. Let me just show you the beginnings of that really quick. Let's go ahead and delete our subtitles. Let's go ahead and delete this. What we're gonna do over in our media pool is we're going to hit select new fusion composition, give it a name, title, create, drag that onto our timeline, and then select that. Let's bring your playhead back to the beginning, and then we can go into the fusion page. And then from there, we can add a text element, we can connect it to our media out, and then you can do all sorts of cool stuff with the effects that are available in Fusion, including the write on text effects. If you wanna learn more about that, you can check out this video right here. And 
For more tools, tips, and tricks that'll make you a better video editor, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that bell so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.